Okay, we're gonna talk about brides, and I have to say that I enjoy doing brides because it's kind of like being part of her most perfect special day. She's gonna remember for the rest of her life. It's the most important day next to maybe giving birth to a baby, but getting married is more fun. Um, <laughs> so I really enjoy being part of the wedding, and so I take it very seriously. And for me, 15 years from now, her dress may no longer fit, but what she will be left with is photographs. And so I always am concerned about how she's gonna photograph. And because of that, um, the lighting that's used, how she's going to be photographed, changes with the time of day her wedding is. So I break it up into morning bride, midday bride, which those are both very close together, late afternoon bride, and evening bride. The later in the day you go, the more dramatic you can get, the more wild you can get. So if you have a girl that loves drama, is a drama queen, she better get married in the evening because you can pile it on and it look natural and pretty. Um, also, you want to always keep in mind how things photograph. Um, for instance, frosted shadows are gonna photograph too shiny, so use a shimmer. They'll give you the look you want. Um, you wanna define certain things a little bit more than you might normally um, during the day. Um, it, for instance, Natalie's young enough that she probably doesn't wear blush um, on an everyday basis. But as a bride, I'd wanna put some blush on her because in late afternoon, she's gonna be photographed that evening at the reception with a flash, which will wash her out slightly even if some of the pictures were done with true daylight in the beginning of the day. So I want a little bit of blush, even if she doesn't normally wear a lot of blush. So you just want to define everything really well. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cream closer. And, and Natalie has slightly deep set eyes. And so we all know that highlighting the, the, the lid is really important in this eye shape. Close for me. So I'm going to highlight, put my cream, my highlight lid on, cream on the lid. I always like layering cream and powder together with my highlight because it really um, intensifies that highlight. Keep in mind that the most natural looks, makeup wise, aren't a lack of makeup, they're the right shade choices. All right, so I've done my cream. I'm now gonna take a powder. I'm just gonna take a creamy beige. Now I'm using my number 22 brush to apply the cream and the powder highlight. Now I'm just gonna go over that. Now I'm patting it on because patting it on gives me more coverage and more dramatic application. Whereas I wiped it on, it would be less. And I'm patting it on this lid. Now, her brow bone. She's just slightly deep set, so I can still highlight her brow bone. But in a photograph, remember, your brow bone comes out further than the rest of your eye shape. And so if you highlight it too shiny, too shimmery, you're just going to see brow bone in every picture. So instead of it doing it with a light shimmery color, I'm simply going to take a fleshy matte shade and lightly highlight just right at that arch of the brow. Not a big space because I promise you in all the pictures you're just going to see brow bone. So just right at that arch. Next, you know me, I'm going to take a matte mid-tone, my brush number 11, take a really beautiful warm matte mid-tone because she's got beautiful warm skin, and I'm going to start to create shape to that lid, applying my color with my number 11 brush, and then I'm going to go back with my clean number 28 brush and blend it out. Remember, you blend out with a clean fluffy brush so as to not to make mud. After I've done the crease, I'm going to go back and take my number 30 brush and apply some mid-tone in this outer corner. Once again, applying it with the brush, blending it out with my clean fluffy brush. Now, in order to start some lash line definition, because I'm not going to want a heavy line above her lash line, but I want that really great definition at the lash line, I'm going to take my number 41 brush and I'm going to start to push color open and look down for me, up into the, where the lashes grow out of the lid. I'm not on the wet tissue, I'm right where the lashes grow out of the lid, keeping it right at the base of those lashes.
look at me. And you can see how this is already starting to subtly define the eye. And then I will only have to go back and line the top lid with a really fine line of shadow. And that gives me that really subtle, pretty definition that I'm looking for for a bride. Before I start a contour color, a couple things we need to think about. One, I want to reiterate that um, a bridal day is not the day to do a bright purple eye, a bright blue eye, um, or a bright green eye, um, because you're going to be looking at these photographs 50 years from now. And you don't want to look like a, you don't want to look like you belonged on a straight corner. Anyway, so I like to stick to more subtle colors, um, like a rich garnet brown, or if you want to do more intense, a, a burgundy always looks nice. Now, in order to prevent drop off, I could use a shadow shield, or I'm just going to take a little bit of powder because she's young, and I can do this, and just put it right over that area to catch all, any fall off of shadow. Then I'm going to take my really pretty garnet shadow, and I'm just going to start to apply it in her contour color area to start to get that definition. Taking my 28 clean brush, blending that out. Remember, we're going to come up a little higher on her eye shape to push away that brow bone. Okay, now I've done my contour color. I want more definition, but I don't need a pencil liner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my number 40 brush. I'm going to take a little burgundy and black shadow to line with. Now remember, when you're touching two shades, the color you touch first will be on top. The color you touch second will be on bottom. So I touched burgundy first, black second, so the black will be closest to her skin. I'm going to take that liner, open look down. And I'm just going to lay it right against that lash line and barely pull up. And it gives me just, see how that's just a little bit more definition, which will look beautiful in photographs. And it's the width of the brush that makes lining like that so easy. Because you literally just lay it down. I'm going to take my number 76 brush and I'm going to wipe off that powder. And as you can see, it just brushes away that shadow that I dripped. So now I have a clean area underneath the eye. Now I'm going to take my number 13 brush and I want to create subtle de definition but gradation of color. I'm going to take my mid-tone, look up, and I'm going to go right along that lash line. I'm then going to take my accent color, my garnet color, and go right over it as well. Creating that subtle definition. I'll then take my number 14 brush, take my highlight shade, highlight the inside corner, along the lower lash line. Okay, so now I'm going to do a layer of mascara. Look down for me. Because we all know I love my lashes. Or her lashes. Let's do a quick layer. Top and bottom. This is my second layer on top. Now I am going to use a waterproof mascara on the bottom because she's so, just so darn happy she's going to cry or might. Look up. So I always think it's best with bridal to use waterproof. And if you really think she's going to cry a lot, I could go over my top layer with waterproof as my third layer and that would waterproof no matter what formula I used on top. Now, as I said, 
with this time of day. Some of the pictures will be being taken with a flash. And so colors to the skin, a little bit of flush to the cheek is so important. So I'm going to make sure, and I'm just brushing off anything that might have dripped, just kind of getting the skin all pretty, pretty imperfect. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of cream blush, smile for me, and I'm going to apply it to the apples of her cheeks. This will start to give me that glow I'm looking for in the photos. I like to apply my cream blush with a brush. It's my brush number 64. I designed it specifically for cream blush. Then I'll take my sponge and just blend it out a little bit. And don't be scared to go a little more intense with your cream blush at first because you're going to go back over it with powder and bronzer anyway. I'm then going to powder that with my number 74 brush. Now I'm going to take a clean number 74, not a clean, but my 74 brush that I bronze with and add my blush with, and I'm going to go ahead and give her a beautiful bronzed glow, starting in her cheekbone area, and then blending up to the temples and down towards the jaw. Give that really beautiful glowy warmth that always photographs so beautifully. Then I'm going to take some powder blush, smile for me, and I'm going to reinforce where I did that cream. All right, so now I'm just going to do one quick thing before we do lips. It always makes everything a little prettier in photographs because it gives us kind of a blank canvas. Um, I am going to do a little bit, look up for me, I'm going to just do a little bit more touching up underneath the eye because I want that to be perfection with my number 54 brush. It's my new foundation brush. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to conceal her lips. I'm just going to lightly conceal the outer edge of the lips so that when I put the new lip on, it's got a nice edge to it. I know a lot of you girls these days don't wear lip liner. I would say for photographs, it's nice to wear a really subtle one because it gives the lips a prettier edge. So I'm taking just a really subtle color and I'm just lightly lining her lips. Just gives me a nice edge. And I'm going to slightly fill in because that will help the color last longer. And when in photographs or a special occasion like this, the less you have to touch up, the better. Now I'm just going to take my brush and blend out that lip liner because you don't want a harsh line. And I'm actually using it for her as the base of her entire lip color because I'm going to go, just go over it with a nice pretty subtle gloss because let's face it, most young girls that's all they want to wear is gloss. So I'm going to take that gloss and just go over that lip liner to give it a pretty shine. Okay, as you can see, what we've done is we've defined her eyes, given her definition, enough that it will photograph beautifully but look natural, and so that all her wedding pictures will look beautiful for forever.